do. Go into views, go to uh, style, right? And select bulk operations. Boom. That's, that's what's in there once you, obviously, you've enabled VBO through the module page. Now, the settings for views bulk operations are extensive. There's a whole bunch, right? So the regular ones are in there, right? I always use invoke directly. The batch API can get you in trouble. I'm just, you know, whatever. You can do either, like, you saw how my, my VBOs had little buttons to submit, right? But, like, Drupal's default one has that drop-down list of, like, because it has a bunch of options, so you don't want to have, like, a bunch of buttons across the top. You can do drop-down list instead. Um, I always skip the confirmation step because I live on the dangerous side. I don't know. Um, I, I merge them into a single action. Um, and then this is where you get, uh, you know, you can do a bunch of stuff. Like, they have a bunch of default stuff. Like, you know, remove stickiness, publish, unpublish. Like, like the publish button in the moderator's queue is just, I just selected, uh, where is it? Publish, you know, or there's unpublish. Um, so it's not a rule set or anything being submitted to the, to the VBO. It's, it's just a regular, like, here's a delete node one, right? So if you add these on there, they're going to come up as other buttons for you, like, preview it. They'll be down here as other buttons. Or if you select to have a drop down, they'll be in the drop down thing. Um, OK, so that's what's going on in there. Uh, once we create some rule sets, and the, the trick there is that you want your rule set to be uh, a content rule set. There's a, couple, there's a bunch of options, actually. But and it has to have one argument, or else it's not going to show up in here. I fought with that for so long. But that's the trick, is that it's like one content, uh, one content argument. And then the rule set will show up in here for you to submit your VBO to. So OK, I'm going to hit cancel. Let me show you some other stuff uh, that's going on in this view that's pretty important for you know, this demonstration. Access right, is set to role, and then it's set to the writer role. Because what's really important for this whole thing so that you know users can't just go in and change whatever they want is that they don't have node administrator permission. Right? So in the permissions page, um, they have like nothing. They can't, they can't do anything. So you, you really have to set in the view them to have permission. Um, yeah. See? Whatever. Refresh. OK. So I want writers, and I'll just see all of them. Filter permissions. Take a little look. Yeah. Um, so you can see that, and especially which one do we not want them to have? We don't want them to have administer views. Absolutely not, <laughs> right? They really they, they can edit their own page content. That's really important, because what we're going to do is that when they submit, um, or when they check out a page, we're going to use our rule set to set them as the author. That's how, that's how we trick it into only letting them edit what's theirs, right? So you know, these permissions are real important. Um, and then they can view the revisions, because that's going to be our little note about how bad their node sucks. Um, and then that's it. I mean, they, they really can't do anything. We don't want them having any other permissions. What else? View checked out in. I guess they can view the checked out in. I don't know why I checked that one, but it's possibly quite important. Well, I guess we'll find out. All right. So let's. Um, so we made our view. Um, here's the thing: that the VBO, when you first install it, it comes with one. And this is actually how I figured out that I could do anything like this. It comes with one default. Ugh, come on, man. What, what am I doing here? OK. It comes with one default operation. Where is it? Example, empty rule set working with content. This is where I went, huh? What is that, right? So, so now let's go over to rules. Take a look. And by the way, the step-by-step -step is on my page. Like, it tells you step-by-step -step exactly what you need to do to end up with this. Um, so in the rules page, you have your rules set. 
and you can see um, when you're creating a new rule set, whatever you name it is going to be the value of the submit button. So, like, if it's if it's checking back in a page, if that's what this rule set does, then call it checking back in a page so that when they see that little submit button, they know what they're doing. Um, let's go to the check out page one and just take a look. You can see in here there's two active rules, right? So to add a rule, like when you first create your, your rule, I wish we were doing this together, but whatever, we're not. Um, you would click add a rule and they would show up in here, right? So this one's an error um, and all it has in it is um, a validation if this field is checked right that's all it says is if this field is checked then it's gonna say do right and I selected um, you can't see it in here because I'm not doing it but here I'll show you if we add another action you can see there's a ton of stuff you can do, right? It's it's basically all the stuff that was in that VBO, but it's like you can add them one after the other after the other, right? So you can modify node fields, you can load concept ID, delete node, and, and what I did um, for this little error message, you know, our condition is if it's already checked out, and you can do I think it's system, yeah. Show a configurable message on the site, right? And what you can do with that is tell it a message, and, and you can display it as an error if you want. If not, it shows up as green. Um, I displayed that one as an error because that's what it is. Uh, so the thing you got to realize about these rule sets too is that they go in order, right? So this validation check happens first. So it's it's a little rule set that that happens. This one's the one that's actually going to change our INT value. And, and let me show you real quick, I think I probably skipped this part. Um, content types. Um, what's going on in here is just CCK fields, right? So like I just added for our page content type. Oh, and an interesting note, when I was putting this thing together, I wasn't able to get it to work unless these fields were added to two content types. I don't know if that was some other thing I was, I was dealing with, but if you're having that problem, add the field to another content type. I think it separates it into another table or whatever. For whatever reason, that makes made a difference while I was doing this. Um, so you can see checked out is just an integer. So like if you're going to add a new field, I'd say call it checked out to, right? Uh, we'll use whatever. And uh, it's just an integer, and I used checkbox right or no single on off checkbox right. So I'm gonna save that. We don't need it on there, but for the purpose of the demonstration, I think it's important. I gotta go and look at my uh, my notes. Hey, look, there's me. Oh, okay. Uh, that's exactly what I was looking for. Things are going my way all of a sudden. Okay, and what we want for this default values oh it's like that right and the label I, I don't know if you guys know this stuff or not so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it all I don't whatever uh, the label is always uh, the second one so when it shows up next to the checkbox that's what it's gonna say it's not gonna say this one um, so it's one and a zero and then we add that to the field, right? Or I mean, we add that to the content type. So we have, now we have cheat out to <laughs> field SWSSS, right? And all we're doing from our rules, uh, I'm just going to add another tab here. So, and then I'm going to go to my rules. And all we're doing from our rule set, is we're gonna populate that field, you know? So they click the button and it triggers the rule set. First thing that happens is it checks for validation. If it's checked out, it gives an error and it exits, right? Now our second one has a validation check too. So check out page also has its own little validation or change check, right? It's only gonna happen if it's not checked out, right? So 
If it is checked out, error message. If it's not checked out, we do all this stuff, right? So let's get into what this stuff is. First, it's, it's populate a field. So you would do add action, populate field, right? And, and you notice this thing too, it says eight actions are not configurable. That's because um, from when you add a uh, rule set, which, like I was telling you, uh, rule sets, add a new rule set, this is what tricked me up for a long time. So if we add xxx the rule set and xxx, you just, it, to, to have it show up when you're in your settings on your VBO, I think you can do other ones besides content, but it needs to just have one argument. And for me, I always just use content. If it's not working with other stuff, just use content. And you can load other stuff after you have the content variable. And I'll show you how to do some of that. So let's go back into uh, check page out. Oh, wait, do I already have that? Yeah. Or no, that's the content. Okay. So change check. The first one, like I did just a second ago, is a populate field. Let me show you what that looks like after you've added it. It's, you know, this is the field you, you choose. Let me add one so you can see. Populate a field. And it's going to have all the fields that are able to be populated. So honestly, like if you have 100 CCK fields, they're all going to be in this list. You know, that, that's what the deal is. So you just got to find the one you're looking for. Um, and, and you would just hit continue, and then you would end up back on like this page. And all it does is it just shows you right through the UI, what do you want to do? You know, what are you going to do to this field when it gets here? For me, I'm checking it out, right? Clicked it. Uh, execute some custom PHP. What I did here is, um, what did I do here? Oh, so this is where I'm saying get the, get the user that's logged in right now global user, right? And then set the node ID to the current user's ID. And then this thing is just how you save, it tells you right here how you save this when when things when you're doing custom PHP. And that's why it was important that we enabled the custom PHP filtering earlier cuz otherwise this thing wouldn't work. And this is an important part of making it so that you know, when they check something out, now it's theirs, they can edit it. They check it back in. We do the opposite. We take it away from them. Now they can't edit it anymore. Um, and then these two fields right here, this could totally be done in another way. I was just having a problem doing it that way. So for the purpose of demonstration, what I did was I populated th this, this CCK field, field writer. You can see it's just a text field, right? I just added a text field, field writer, to the, to the content type. And I put their name in it. So. Uh, where did I get author from? Where's author coming from? That's important. Looks like before. Oh, okay. See, there's there's a ton of stuff you can do. So load the content author. So, so the way this works is that it populates checked out. Then the script sets the author to the current logged in author, right? Then I load the author of the node, which we just set to the currently logged in author. Now we're going to populate a text field with that value, and then we're going to populate uh, a number text field with the user's ID. Um, like I said, this could be done in a different way. I just I was fighting to get it to work correctly. Um, but here, here, there you go. So now what you end up with, like we were seeing, if you you know, you end up with their name, their number, and it's all on the node. The reason I did that is so that when you're in um, moderate, you know, you can see who submitted it to you. Uh, switch the bell. <clears throat> Go to the writer's queue. Uh, yeah, so let's check that. Because hey man, uh, yeah. Because if they're taking the author away from it, you know, after you've submitted it in, 
then then you don't know who submitted it to you. So you have to save their name somewhere on the node. You know what I mean? Um, let's go into something different here. Okay. So let's take a look at the moderation queue. And uh, let's go back over to VBO real quick. Or views. And check out the moderation queue. And all I did for uh, Bill's little menu there was I just created a little menu <laughs> that links back and forth between, you know, his checkout view. Oh, 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 I, I skipped the uh, check back in view, didn't I? Yeah, we should look at that real quick, too. Uh, writers, check out. So this is the page that's going to have, um, you know, the pages he's checked out and the pages that the moderator has rejected back to him. Um, and a cool thing we can do here that I don't think I did right now, oh, 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 and you really need to do this part too, is that, um, so for the pages checked out queue, right, when somebody checks something out, you want them to only see the stuff they have checked out, right? So you add an argument to the view for the user that posted the comment, right? So you add an argument. You select this provide default argument, right? So, whatever you're you're adding a default argument, and then you can click this user ID from logged in user, right? So that's the argument, and um, and so if we go to preview, and uh, Bill's user ID is three, we can see that he has three things checked out. So when he's logged in, he sees his. We you know when Jill's logged in, she sees hers that she checked out. Right, so it's like um, there's you begin with this queue of pages that anybody can check out. Now, once you've checked it out, it becomes yours, and anything that is rejected back to you is also yours because this argument only lets you see the ones. I, I guess you could have done that with a filter, maybe not, but really the way to go with this is an argument. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Okay. Um, yeah, we need to look again at these bulk operations. And you'll notice single actions. Uh, yeah, I mean, every time you add a new rule set, it adds another little thing in here, and that's what the thing gets submitted to. Um, so I'm going to go back to the rule sets and show you some more of that, because that's, that's really where the meat and potatoes of this thing is. But, man, I would really recommend. I mean, the cool thing, too, about this whole session is that it's not necessarily, in my mind, like, like I had to do this to get a task done, right? You know? But what it, this is really showing, too, is that you can be creative with Drupal and just find ways to do whatever you're trying to do. Um, I looked at some moderation modules, and, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, it's like it just wouldn't do exactly what I wanted it to do. None of them would do exactly like like what I wanted to do was have him import a big list, you know, and then those would all be like he told me these specs, you know, of what he had in his mind, and I'm like, well, maybe I could do this or maybe I could do it that way, but like this is what I ended up with, and, and you can, I mean, with this combination of modules along with permissions, you can set up any sort of moderation and and like, I don't know, man. I, I'm in love with doing this type of thing. <laughs> I really am. I, I wish more people needed this so, sort of a, uh, um, a solution. Because I'm pretty good at it now, you know what I mean? Let's see here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's more of the same in here. Uh, what, are, what? Which one are we at? Reject. Okay. So, and this is one of the things that I kind of don't like about this whole system, is that we end up with a bunch of CCK fields on our nodes that, after they're through the queue system and published, are useless, right? I mean, the next version that I, I was thinking of doing with this was to use, um, what's that thing called? It's, it's just like one field, right? And you can just tell it to where to be in the queue, you know? Like, maybe it's an integer value one, so it's going to be at this stage, integer value two. But let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, we go to edit, 
and you're not Bill, like Bill, or any writer, Jill, anybody, they, they all they can do is see the body and the content, and whatever else, you know, meta tags, and maybe it's, you know, editable there, but when you're really seeing it for what it is, you end up with all this stuff, right? And we need all of this to go through the queue system, like, is it checked in or is it checked out? Is it, has it been submitted for a review? Now, it's important too to realize that I filtered each note, uh, each view, right? So it's not just like a view's bulk operation. I'm also using the regular view stuff to make it so that once you've clicked to check it back in, it's not in your queue anymore, <laughs> right? And once the moderator has published, like it's not in his queue. So we kind of need like all of these to be here. Like, is it rejected? Then it's not going to be in those other queues. I'll show you. I'll show you some of the filters real quick that I have set up on these views. Let's take a look at. Yeah, writers checked out should have some quite a few filters, I would imagine. Yeah. So for writers checked out, you know, it's checked out equals one, and it has not been submitted, right? So then we have to make sure when we're sending rejections back that this this is true so that it'll show up back in their their thing, right? So um, let me see. And just stop me if you guys have a question at any time in here. I'm I'm just going through it. Uh, okay, so the moderator's queue has been submitted one and is not published, right? So that once they publish it, they're not seeing it in their queue anymore. And uh, yeah. Okay. All right. That was much. Yeah. I mean, another thing is that like. These fields are not like you can't see them. Oh, I already showed you that. You can't see them from their um, their side. Let me look at my add new rule. Check back in. Writers checked out. Change check change. I can show you how to add a menu. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys want to see that or not. Um, and, and what I did to a lot of this was I was like cloning, right? So is, you know, for the check back in rule, I started by cloning check out, you know, and, and all that type of stuff. You can do the same thing in rules, um, but not you can't clone a whole rule set. You can clone rules within a rule set. Um, so this is, these are actions within a rule. <laughs> There's a couple of levels in this bad boy. So yeah, like, like when you're in a rule set, I could clone reject a page. And why don't, why don't I do that? Um, just to show you what's going on in here. You would clone it. Rule set, still the same. And we're going to call it reject page two. And what we can do like I said, like they go in order. So if you want to do like a message or um, wait, hang on. It's better. It's better if I show you this other one. Uh, empty written with some. Why don't I delete that one real quick? Actually, I don't want to mess up my whole drive. And I really wish my uh, local host thing would have worked, but I guess that's okay. Um, oh, you know, one of the things, too, I want to tell you is that, um, like, when you add the fields for whatever, um, like the writer's queue, for instance, like, you need to have the permission set so they can see each thing, and then... Um, this is the writer's queue, so oh, let's check out. My bad. Moderator's queue. Um, oh, oh, oh! You know what we could do? That would be pretty cool. 
and it would add to what we have now, is that if we go into here and we, oh yeah, I already have that. What we could do is we could group it by what's been rejected and what hasn't been rejected, right? So that our message. Maybe that's why I had that permission checked so that I could do this, but I never got around to it. Okay, so no revision. What we need to do is add a rejected field. Content rejected. Add. And we could actually exclude it from display because well, I don't think they'll be able to see it anyway, but Okay, so put a three preview. Oh, scoot over a little bit, maybe. Is it just like not there? Content rejected. I excluded from display. Dee -dee -dee. Oh, uh, but but if we group it by that, right? Then um, when they log in, and this is something I did on that live version, you can see that it separates them for them. So like when you're on your edit page, and like I use some some CSS in the uh, the header. That's one of my little tricks that I like to do too. Is I'll just I'll just write CSS right here because I'm lazy. Right, um, and it just it just separates their rejected pages from their not rejected pages. Let's take a look and see if that works for the ones that are already logged in. I mean that aren't logged in. Writers checked out. Switch the bill. Yeah, it looks like it doesn't work actually. So maybe they do need the permission to do that or to see that field. I mean, it, that's what gets tricky about this thing too is that it's, it's like all tied into permissions. Like if they can't see the field, then it's not going to show up on their edit form, but they can still edit it behind the scene, which is kind of what's cool. So what are we looking for? Yeah, edit field rejected. View field rejected. Yeah. I think that'll allow them to now see the fact that we've grouped that table differently. So now, now when they see their pages, they can see this not rejected, rejected. <laughs> Let me. Uh, so I, it's because I added that custom label. You know, if I just take the label off, I think it would be better, so that you can put your own like what's rejected and what's not rejected. But um, so I mean, I guess that's kind of it. I ran through the whole thing pretty quick because. Uh, we weren't able to do it together, but um, why don't I just check out some stuff? Oh, you know what? The thing I didn't add to this, these are both just messages that happen in the rule set after you've uh, successfully done it, which I hope by now you would know how to do. But uh, So they check the pages out, check them back in. And they're gone out of their queue because the filter is in place, right? And then the moderator should, should be able to see them because his filter has been set off by them being in there. And he can, you know, publish and it goes out of his queue, boom, it's gone forever into the live site. Or, 
like a, you know, like we showed before, he can reject things, and as long as he writes a revision note, it's it's done. It's selected. I mean, it's rejected. We'll go back to Bill. We'll go back to the writer's queue, and we should see that it's been rejected. Yeah. So I mean, all in all, it's pretty cool. There's there's some stuff I'd like to do to update it and make it a little better, like so that we wouldn't end up with those fields on the node still when we're done. But um, powerful stuff, powerful stuff. And you know, VBO has so much more in it, but honestly, I think this is the most powerful thing VBO does. Correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> it's, it's pretty sweet, you know. Um, so I'll open it up for questions or just comments or whatever you guys want to talk about. Anything? No? I blew you away. Your mind is blown. Um, did I really, did I cover well enough the fact, like, how this is happening and the fact that why they can't edit it and all that? Do you guys get that? What's that? Okay. You guys understand that stuff? Okay. And then the publishing. You know, one of the things we dealt with a little bit was, um, they wanted to be able to see their nodes after they submitted them back, you know? And since they didn't have uh, the, what is it? Yeah, they, I mean, people who don't have uh, administer nodes permission set cannot see unpublished nodes, right? So if they've submitted a node, what? Yeah, something like that. I mean, I can't remember what we did. We. Yeah, see, that's the thing I was going to do. I was going to use workflow and then just change the state each time. Like, But um, we would still have to do the author, what I call author switching, so that they can't edit it once they've checked it back in, you know? Yeah, no, there is, but it's like this giant like grid. Through the rule set? Um, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's the other thing I guess you could do would be like, I don't know, let me stop the uh, recording because I think we're, we're done with the session at least. And, uh,